Hello! Okay, I wanted to make kind of a follow-up to the optimizing cycles video from a couple days ago. Just focusing on cheating or, or kind of faking volumetrics and cycles because I absolutely love rendering with volumetrics. It's a, it's a really good way to add a lot of atmosphere to your scene and sometimes if you're not asking too much of it, it can work really well. Like if you're just trying to add kind of an ambient haze to a scene, it can actually render pretty quick. But as soon as you start asking too much of it, like you want to show, you know, a shaft of light or a flashlight beam or car headlights, you run into crazy render times. And maybe there's a way to optimize that, but I haven't really found it yet. Um, so I'm going to create a cube, scale it up. This will be our, our volume domain here. Yeah, I'm uh, going to create a new material. We actually don't want anything going into the surface, uh, so we're going to disconnect that. But under volume, we'll give it volume scatter. And uh, sometimes you have to move the mouse before you can see it. It's very dense right now, so let's let's change the density to uh, like 0 0.01. And this can render okay. I, I keep running into a situation where it looks like it's going to render nice and clean, but then it gets enough information so that the denoiser actually starts trying to like denoise different artifacts in the beam and you end up with this really pixelated beam and it's kind of kind of intense but let's add like six point lights up here they're not even really affecting anything they're just in the scene uh but now oh and this is what i'm talking about where it looks like it's going to be clean and then suddenly the denoiser goes like no chung, chung, chung. and uh even if we crank the samples here this is a pretty gnarly render and let's see what if we just make the noise threshold like really low that does not really help, and I think this is like a tenth of what the default values are, and so... So let's see if we can cheat it, and a lot of you have probably seen in a video, or come up with it yourself, or seen me, uh, use an emissive volume instead of volumetrics, and in here, let me, let me show you. I'm gonna line up a cube here with, with this hole. Cool, and I'm actually, I'm gonna keep the origin right, right here in the hole. Then I'm gonna scale it up like this, and, uh, if we do the same thing we just did, here, uh, nothing going into the surface, the volume now has an emission, and we can turn this strength way down too. And look at that, now the beam is actually the first thing to resolve. It's it's done on the very first sample because it doesn't care what the rest of the scene is doing. It's just radiating a little bit of light. But obviously it's a cheat that, you know, there's a lot of issues with it. If you have like a cube move in here, it's not gonna be casting a shadow through the haze like you'd get with real volumetrics. And I always seem to run into the issue where when I get right along the edge, it's just, it feels so crisp, even if that kind of makes sense, that I kind of want to soften this up. And that also like makes it more ambiguous where it's hitting the beam of light so you don't have to line everything up so perfectly. So let's Let's play around with this beam a little bit more. I'm uh, gonna go into local view. I'm gonna create a little cube too so we can see what we're doing in kind of more cubic form and I'm gonna give it the, the same material. Um, okay, so I'm gonna create a gradient texture, plug that color into the color and you can see it goes from zero to one, which is nice. Uh, I'm gonna change it to spherical and now it's gonna be centered around one of the points, the bottom left point. But we wanna offset the coordinates so it's actually centered in the middle of the uh, of the space. So I'm gonna hit Control T because I have the Node Wrangler add-on activated. And if I hit negative 0.5, negative 0.5, uh, negative 0.5, it's now centered in the very middle, although we're right, it's kind of like filling the whole space, so it's hard to see. But if I add a color ramp after the gradient here, we can kind of like control the fall off. And look at that, we can bring this in, and so the sphere isn't actually intersecting the sides, which is which is what we want. Um, and this is cool. You could, you know, turn down the, the strength of this and just have this be a little bit of haze wherever you wanted it, kind of like down the, at the end of an alley or something like that. Again, like just keeping it really faint could be really nice for giving something a little bit of an ambient glow without having to go fully volumetric. But here, let's, let's make it a little bit brighter here. But I kind of want to make this like an eternal shaft of light. And so what I want to do is just use a single cross section of this stretched out for infinity. So I'm going to scale on the Z axis down to zero and it disappears but if we get rid of our offset on the z-axis too there we go we have these really convenient light cylinders yeah there we go that's a that's a beam right there here let's let's turn that down a little bit um yeah that's looking good and because it's a cylinder there's no flat edge that you can line up with and get that weird kind of crisp artifact and that means i can just keep things nice and subtle i like that a lot in fact here let's go to solid mode i'm gonna give this a constraint under the constraint panel copy rotation of the sun. And so now it'll just do whatever the sun's doing. Check this out. And yeah, look at that. Okay. And this works because the shaft of light's origin is right here in the hole. And so it's just rotating around that, that point, matching the angle of the sunlight. Here, let's recenter it a little bit. And let's see if we can do something a little bit more interesting with this, with this beam. So I'm going to create a Voronoi texture here. Use these same, these same coordinates. So it's still just going to be using a single cross section of the Voronoi. Uh, I'm going to drag the color, 
down into the emission shader here and oh that's actually that's very nice that's not what i want but that's that's good to remember uh i guess here let's use distance instead and look at that it still renders immediately but uh it just looks a little bit more interesting now unfortunately we do have these you know perfectly hard edges again but what if we combine these two so uh the gradient texture with the voronoi so i'll use a uh, mix rgb here whoop and drag our gradient texture into the base gonna multiply them crank this all the way up and now we still get that voronoi effect but only in the uh, location of the original beam and here we can turn up the scale to make it a little bit more complex and look at that it's nice and subtle and it renders really quick uh here let's make it a little a little less subtle, a little less tasteful but there's one more thing i've been doing with this and that's using it for a larger area here let's let's create a uh, a cube here uh control l link materials gonna hide this one but now we just have this cube full of fast rendering light rays i i like that a lot in fact let's go after the voronoi texture and add an rgb curve and just darken the dark areas a little bit i think that just makes it makes it feel a little bit nicer um but remember right now this mapping node is going into both the voronoi texture and the gradient texture using a single cross section that scaled out to infinity so we could have this go forever and it would just always be these parallel beams but if you ever didn't want the beams to go on forever it's kind of weird that they just end like this and so i I might duplicate this mapping node here stick the duplicate into the gradient texture and uh here let's let's scale this back up to one and recenter it here negative 0.5 and now we just have this orb full of light rays which maybe looks a little bit weird in in this situation here let's let's make it subtle again uh 0 0.02 but imagine you had like a big forest scene or something you know with a lot of trees having this kind of just random dappled light could add a lot of atmosphere without too much additional render time again this doesn't this doesn't make any sense but it's subtle enough it doesn't immediately read as wrong and i've been using this exact technique in the uh the phaeton scene uh just to give outer space some atmosphere you know that no that doesn't make any sense i'm assuming it's just like dust and distant micro particulate but it just makes the whole scene read a lot better and have a better sense of scale and it makes the compositions read a little faster so I'm I'm kind of pushing the cheat as as much as I can but I think I'm going to use this technique quite a bit for just adding random random atmosphere without having the crazy render times required by proper volumetrics anyways hopefully there's there's something useful in there for you uh I'm going to go eat a sandwich <laughs>